I feel like I need to spin a top right now just to see. Welcome to the Daily Needs. This is a daily look at classic films, modern cinema, and the world of professional wrestling. And today I want to talk about a film from 1961. It's a French film. It's called Last Year at Marienbad. I'm not going to try and say the French title because that would be a bad thing and I think like my next two or three films are like Frenchy French titles. Um, so I'm going to save you today. Uh, Last Year at Marion Bad is a movie about a man and a woman and I'm not just saying a man and a woman because I can't remember their names. They have no names because why give your main characters names? That would make too much sense. Um, it's about a man and a woman and he runs into her at this hotel and he's like, Hey, last year I saw you at Marion Bad last year and you said you were going to meet me here and I'm here and you're here and she's like, what are you talking about? And that's pretty much the whole thing is he's like, yo, we, last year this stuff happened. She's like, I don't remember that. Maybe I do. No, I don't. He's like, no, that totally happened. Did it happen? I don't think it happened. Maybe this happened. And it's about an hour and a half of that plus gorgeous, gorgeous cinematography, just tracking shots of this a sprawling hotel and this classic looking garden. It looks like a painting, although I think it's legit, but I can't tell. Um, but yeah, it's like, it is the best representation of a dream I've seen on film. Um, and I said at the beginning, spinning a top, uh, of course, referencing the movie Inception. Um, which is an excellent movie and I love it. And that movie goes into dreams. And for a long time, like I thought that was like a really good representation of dreams. But looking back on it with Inception, everything is still following logic. We're on this snowy mountain, everything's gonna continue to be on this snowy mountain until we jump back to uh, whatever level was before the snowy mountain, the um, hotel and all this, you know, you know what I mean? Like everything, everything follows real world logic in the dream, except for like when they fold things over and the, and like, I'm going to make this gun bigger now, but it's still very conventional. But with last year at Marion Bad, um, it does what our brains do in dreams. When we're dreaming, we could be in one situation, having one conversation. Like I could be in my kitchen talking with Cody. And then by the end of the conversation, we are sitting on a ski lift in Russia and Cody is now a dog, but nothing really changes in my mind. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Even though it makes no sense. What happens in this movie is they'll have conversations. The man and the woman will be having a conversation and from one line to the next, the camera cuts angles like you expect a movie to do, but they're in different costumes at a different location, probably at a different period of time. And they make no reference of it. They just continue their conversation and it's super, super jarring when it first happens, but by the end of it, you feel like you understand exactly what the man is thinking and what the woman is thinking. And it, it flows in that kind of like dreamlike way, but following the dream logic, like you understand by the end of the film, okay, that doesn't make sense. But in this film, that makes perfect sense that, okay, now she's in that costume in that room. Now the bed sheets change. Okay, that's fine. Um, and instead of following like a storyline or a character arc, this film kind of follows the arc of thought or the arc of a dream. And it's done in such a unique way that I haven't seen in films before. Like I've called other films dream. Like yesterday I watched Synecdoche, New York and in the description of the video, I called it a fever dream. But even that, sort of followed logic. There was still, everything was kind of logical. The, what the characters were doing didn't always make sense, but the cutting and the, the editing of the film itself made sense. This, not even close. Very, very dreamlike. Um, I know that there is a whole lot of conversations happening about this film and about what it means and what is real, what isn't. My personal belief, I've only seen it the one time and I just finished watching it 25 minutes ago. My personal belief is that the whole thing is the man's dream. Um, the woman may or may not be a real woman in his real life, but I don't think at any point in the film do we see his actual life. Every shot of this movie, there is something a little skewed about it. Either like 
extras are just standing still in the background, shadows are appearing on the ground where they shouldn't be, things like that. Nothing is, I don't think, again, my opinion, I don't think anything in this film is actually happening. I think the whole thing is a dream. Um, and I guess that leads to the question, what is the point? I don't know if there is one. I don't know if there needs to be one. Um, every, Nearly every film we watch, unless it's like an Andy Warhol, Six Hours of a Guy Sleeping film, is telling a story. And while this is kind of telling a story, it's also kind of not. And I think that's a nice change of pace. I think what this, what this film is telling is a feeling. Um, and it's just... It's just kind of eliciting raw emotion while you're watching it. Um, it's jarring feelings when there's quick cuts out of nowhere, and like the feeling of longing and and um, and love for something that may not even exist. That I think we've all felt. I know I've had dreams in the past of like, oh, there was a girl in that dream, and I really wish she was real. Um, before I met Cody, um, so I think it's something that we can all relate to, and I think that's the purpose of the film. Why it's all just a dream. Because that is the, that's the cop out, isn't it? When, when movies and TV go to crazy places, how do we, how do we get out of it? Oh, it was all just a dream. Like it's, it's a cop out, but I think here it's necessary in this film with this uh, s story, so to speak. I think that's necessary. Um, very, very interesting watch. I can't say I recommend it for everybody. It is like a total, like film nerd, <laughs> movie. Um, but it's different. It's very different. Um, and very interesting. Very interesting movie. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna look at it again anytime soon, but I'm sure it'll cross my path again and I'll give it another go. It's not long. It's not a long movie, which is appreciated. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> it's just crazy. Two, two days in a row I get these really weird movies. <laughs> Um, thank goodness tomorrow I'm going to go to something more normal, professional wrestling. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to look at uh, Monday Night Raw and talk about that and where the WWE is going on the road to payback. I don't think that's a thing because it's the road to WrestleMania. Now we're just kind of like meandering towards payback at this point. Uh, but that's for tomorrow. Uh, as for today, please like, share, uh, hit that subscribe button. Um, leave a comment below, uh, you know what, comment, tell me about a crazy dream you had. I, I like dreams, dreams of things. Tell me about just a total bonkers dream you had. And then maybe I'll tell you about the one where Gandhi tried to poison children with candy that I had recurring when I was a child. Um, but yeah, until tomorrow.